go on to an, another question. Right? Next question. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we'll go with another questions. Yes. So the third questions will be, uh, what is the role of PCMA? Yes. So maybe I, I will start first, okay? <laughs> of course, okay. of course. Of course uh, so pre -com PCMA, pre-computation medical assessment. This is the main topic I, I would like to discuss today. So let, let me speak in Pamis, okay? <laughs> uh, I don't know who the Dinesh will name pre-computation medical assessment, so Rajaro. အခုကျွန်တော်ရှိရပြောခဲ့တဲ့ဆိုပါစ်အင်ဂျူရီစ်တွေเนาะရောကြောင့်မစ္စတာစတီဖန်နက်စ်ဝိနီးတော့ရပ
So first thing, uh, another thing is musculoskeletal. So is there any joint pain, any uh, previous injury trauma history? And another thing is, uh, as I have mentioned, cardiovascular is quite much important. So any his previous history or chest pain or palpitation, something like that, we would like to ask. And for respiratory system, there is any problem with, you know, breathing, any, you know, breathlessness, any wheezing during breath breathing, those kind of history should be asked. That's what I think. Abdominal is just any, do you have any abdominal pain or previous, any, uh, any attack at the abdominal area, something like that. Just a quick question. For neurology, uh, what I would like to emphasize is epilepsy and any previous history of fits, seizures, and uh, other maybe if uh, any other relevant history, we will note it. We will note it, right? Uh, if if he or she has previous history of stroke, we have to note at uh, as a neurological finding. But what we want to emphasize is any history of epilepsy before or I E N D. We normally ask uh, your vision. Is your vision well? You can see everything very well. Or do you have any problem with your hearing or at your neck at your throat, something like that. Just a quick screening question. And psychiatry is a little bit trick, right? It's a sensitive issue. So we, I would like to just ask, is there any previous problems with your, uh, you know, your, your mental health? I right? just a number quick and just touch uh, touch the question. So I, I will not go into detail if it is, there's no relevant finding, but if there is some, problems at a specific point, we will go into details. That's what I think. And, and infectious diseases like hepatitis B, C, which, which are quite, you know, easily communicable diseases, maybe in, in the water. So as far as I know, like any skin diseases, skin uh, infections, skin problems, and then it can spread in the water. So I think we, we have to ask the swimmers before competition, right? And if it is a participant or if the sports person is female, we have to ask the female gynecological history, like their, whether the menstrual period is uh, regular or not, when it is uh, the last menstrual period and any pregnancy uh, right now or not, something like that. So we have to rule out, right? And uh, any current drug history and any surgery before, any history of hospitalizations or I think in, if the swimmer is, you know, uh, he has some swimming experience before, and maybe he has some health problems, he, he or she had some problems, they will, you know, tell our, they will tell us about the previous history, previous <laughs> problems during swimming, right? So it, it can be helpful. So this is the medical history. Uh, I think uh, it, uh, this, this should be put in PCMA for swimmers. So uh, what do you think, Mr. Mr. Stephen? <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, very yeah. good explanation. So one, uh, what I know about uh, PCMA, yes. that is pre-competition medical assessment. Yes. No, since I represent FIFA for Myanmar as an agent, this is oh, one of the, yeah, this is yes. one of the topics that is very important to FIFA mm. when it comes to football. Yes. And uh, most of the countries everywhere, even including Myanmar, no mm -hmm. matter who you are, the moment you sign a professional contract, you have to go for PCMA. That is medicals. Mo mostly people call it medicals. Even if the club give you a contract, you have to go medical checkup. They have to check you. Well, if either you don't have like a chronic diseases like uh, diabetes or HIV, or the other other dangerous sickness, you understand? So every club that signed a professional player, they make sure that you pass through PCMA then before you can play a professional league. Because, you know, those sickness, that chronic diseases, if you don't take care and go through medicals, it can affect you in your game. You can fall down. Anything can, help, can happen to you to die on the field. So when it comes to PCM, FIFA is very serious when it comes to football. And then again, I'll go straight to the point. point. PCM, PCMA, these are a set of tests 
conducted on athletes to ensure they are safe to participate in any form of physical activities. So you could see that this is a form of test that we do. So no matter what sports you are doing, so far as the sports is professional, they try to check all tests, especially in Myanmar. One time I was in the football federation where they were organizing the League Two League. So they call all the people to come inside the room. They have to check their blood sugar. If they have high blood sugar or low blood sugar, they check everything. They have to check your strength, especially your joints, everywhere to see that you are physically fit before the federation can approve that you can go into the game. That's why they do PCMB. So it's, it's make sure that the, the person who is participating in the sports is physically fit. And the aim is to detect possible medical Ill, illness, illnesses that may be catastrophic, catastrophic to an actress to an athlete when they are engaged in an, any exertional physical activities. And this in football was introduced by FIFA in the year 2006 World Cup, where an 81% response rate showed that standardized physical assessment impossible. And since every team has to conduct them prior to competition. So, when it comes to PCMA, it's very important to FIFA, since FIFA wants to protect every athlete from injuries and maybe emergency illness. Thank you. This is yes. What I thank you. Thank you very much. So maybe I'll continue to next sessions. That is uh, medical examination. So session B is just for medical history. History is just asking the participants uh, the previous histories of those kinds of problems. So session C, we have uh, to examine the you know participant or sports person. Uh, so this is usually done by doctor, uh, uh, if possible, sports medicine doctor or any kind of doctor who has uh, you know studied this area. So for a swimmer, I think this. This is just a normal routine medical examination procedures that are usually done by almost every doctor. So we also, uh, we, we usually, you know, examine the general condition of the person and we test the temperature. Can the condition mean well conscious, a consciousness that it is well or well oriented, something like that. And we measure the body temperature, fibri, is he or she has fever or not. And we usually see the, this conjunctiva. It is whether it is pale or not. It can, you know, show uh, the patient has anemia or not. That the, the person has anemia or not. There's a general quick assessment. So for cardiovascular, that is for heart assessment, we measure blood pressure. BP is blood pressure, and we measure heart rate. We, you know, hear the heart sound with our stethoscopes. And for the chest, for the respiration, breathing, we. Uh, usually measure the respiration rate, how many uh, respiration within a minute, and we hear the breath sound with stethoscope, and or sometimes we measure, no, not sometimes, all, almost always we measure uh, at, at the fingertip with our oximeter, that is oxygen saturation level in your blood can be measured. And also we uh, examine, palpate the abdomen with our hands, any pain, any mass, and power sound we can hear with stethoscope is normal or not. That's just normal routine uh, medical examinations. And neurological, there are many steps in neurological examination in, in routine medical procedure. But in, in this case, I just just touched the uh, you know inspections like GCS mean Glasgow coma skill. That is with the patient, uh, the person has a full you know orientation well conscious or not we has we, we measure with the scoring with 15 out of uh, uh 15 out of 15 or not something like that that is just quick assessment and muscle power if we want to measure the muscle power or, or the whole body it would take a long time so we do some screening movement if there is suspicion about uh weakness in some area of bodies and then we go into detailed examination so that is 
how uh, we normally uh, we, we we are normally doing, and also we test the sensory that is the touch sensation. It is equal on both sides or not. Whether you have any numbness, that that is how we are doing with quick assessment methods. And musculoskeletal is no, last but not the least. It it is very important for sports person. I think for swimmers, I, when we examine the upper limb, arms and shoulders, and the most important area will be shoulder. As that, that's just what I think, because swimming we need a lot of shoulder movements, right? And also we have hip joints at the lower limb. Those are uh, key areas for uh, swimming movements. And also we also examine the spine, you know, back of the body and gait is walking pattern. So we use a uh, GALS screening method, skull screening, G for gait, A for arm, L for leg, and S for spine. So that is our routine, quick assessment of musculoskeletal system. So we ask the patient first to walk uh, to and fro, and then we ask that person to bend over. That is, we check the spine and we, uh, we ask the person to raise the arms. That is, we can check any problem in upper limbs, you know, arm, shoulder. And we ask the person to do squat. Then we can check any lower limbs problem, especially hips. So that is our quick uh, assessment or, uh, procedure for musculoskeletal system. So I think uh, this uh, can be enough for a quick medical examination. But there are some investigation, medical investigation methods. We should be involved in a PCMA. But right now in, you know, in our, our situation, maybe in the, you know, in, in the field, in the, in, uh, for example, in the uh, swimming pool, in, at a swimming pool, there will be no facilities for like, you know, uh, testing the heart with ECG electrocardiogram, like right? we need a machine for that kind of, detail uh, assessment and sometimes we need to uh, as you said we have to check the blood sugars so if we have we prepare we can bring the glucometer that we can check the blood sugar level but some uh, something like ecg electrocardiogram there will be some limitation so i haven't put that kind of investigation in this form but if it is available it we can provide those you know procedure further procedure is more convenient ish would be more helpful so that's what i think but right now i just made this draft for you know the apollo uh, swimming tournament okay so uh, this is uh, what i would like to show you all so maybe i will oh. stop screen sharing <laughs> okay so uh let me come in here doctor yeah. talk about cardiovascular endurance so Mm. Maybe someone yes. is here and he, he or she don't understand the meaning of cardiovascular endurance. So the most important thing that's why we do PCMA test is the cardiovascular endurance. And yes. it's, it's a type of uh, component, it's a component of fitness. And cardio, the meaning of cardio in, cardiovascular endurance is also the same as stamina. And this means that the ability to exercise the body for a long period of time without getting tired. So the main uh, reason why they conduct the PCMA test is that a, an athlete can exercise the body for a long period of time. So if you cannot exercise your body for a long period of time, then it means there is something, there is illness or anything. You understand? That's why FIFA or any sports, like swimming, football, and other sports, they do the PCMA test to make sure that you can exercise your body for the long period of time. As an example, in soccer, they play 90 minutes. So if you don't have cardiovascular endurance, which is stamina, it will be very difficult for you to exercise the body for that long period of time. And uh, uh, track and field, those who could do running, and all those kinds of sports. Thank you. Yes. So um, let, let me ask you a question, Mr. Stephen. Uh, you mentioned okay. uh, uh, you mentioned cardiovascular endurance. It, it's I, I, As far as I know, it's quite very much important. Maybe uh, many other kinds of sports, right? Not only footballs, right? So how can we uh, test this 
cardiovascular endurance. But uh, what I know is there is fitness testing for sports person. It is a little bit different from PCM because I think mm -hmm. uh, like uh, uh, it also uh, asks the sports person or maybe an athlete to perform some kind of sports specific skills like agility training or something like that, right? So in PCMA, we don't usually put those kind of tests in PCMA. We just do the Medicare assessment. So those kind of uh, tests, uh, how, they, how, how do they usually do that cardiovascular annual assessment test or other fitness tests? Could you please share some experience, you know? Because I am well, no we, yeah. Well, we, we don't have a specific text for yeah. cardiovascular endurance. Okay. Like I explained to you that cardiovascular endurance is the ability to exercise the body for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So normally we do the PCMA test to check if the person don't have any chronic diseases or illness, you understand? So if you do PCMA and a person with maybe a diseases like diabetes, it, is, it will be very difficult for a diabetic person to play 90 minutes game. You understand? Because one, when the blood sugar start going, when the blood sugar is high and the athletes start performing, the blood sugar, the moment you start exercise, it's, it's going to be low. You understand what I'm saying? So yes. let's say if your blood sugar is not balanced and you are in a game, your blood sugar is high, and it's decreased at once, you can fall and die. You know that. Yes. So the PCMA, after the PCMA test, it, it will indicate that this person is fit, has all the components of fitness, like power, agility, everything. Do you understand? But when they conduct the PCMA test, after the results, then they can see that this person have a cardiovascular endurance because this person can exercise the body for a long period of time. So if yes. you can exercise the body for a long period of time, it yes. means yes. your condition is not too high. You understand what I'm, see, I'm saying? Yes. That's yes. why FIFA conducts this test. But we don't have a test to conduct that, to see that you have a cardiovascular endurance. We don't have that test. Yes, yes. yes I but see. But your, your, your strength will indicate your your, uh, your your strength will indicate that you you have stamina or you don't have. Thank you. I see. All right. Thank you very much. So PCMA also can detect those kinds of things, right? Of course. Okay. Of I course. see. I see. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, shall we go on to?